In this video, we're going to take a look at two axes from the Italian company Prandi. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to declare that these axes were sent to me by Prandi of Italy, and I did not pay for them. However, I did pay for the shipping to get them here. I also want to declare that I'm receiving no other compensation for making this video. Now, what we're going to do is go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the specifications for the two axes, and then we'll go into my experiences with them. And then, of course, we'll get outside and do some demonstrations before wrapping up. So both of the axes, or the axe and the hatchet, sent to me by Prandi are what they refer to as the German design, also known to many people as the Rhineland pa pattern. And it's a very well-known, very common pattern, and for good reason. It's a very effective axe design or axe head design. So we're going to go over the larger of the two of them first. And uh, so it starts, let's start with the weight, and the weight of the head comes in at 1,000 grams or one kilogram, which is 2.25 pounds. So that's obviously quite a heavy head weight. They are made from C45 carbon steel, which is very similar to 1045 carbon steel. They are hammer forged and they're polished and they have a hardened blade. The handle on this axe is 60 centimeters or 23.65 inches and is made from American Hickory. All right, we'll set that one aside. Looking at the smaller of the two, the hatchet, also uh, the Rhineland pattern or German pattern axe. And in this case, the hatchet comes in at a head weight of 600 grams or 1.35 pounds. It is also made from C45, the similar to 1045 carbon steel. It is also hammer forged, polished, and hardened blade. The handle on this, made of American hickory, comes in at 36 centimeters or 14.2 inches. Now, I'm going to go over the axis in a little bit more detail, showing you some of the features in a minute. But what I want to do at this point is roll in some footage of the two axes as I received them 10 months ago from Prandi, because it is, uh, well, it's important for you to see this before I talk further about the axis. So here are the two axes as they arrived from Prandi in their original condition right after I took them out of the shipping container. And uh, what I'll do is I'll focus in on the hatchet to start with, and then we'll have a look at the axe. And uh, so to start, it did come with a nice little leather mask. I say nice, it's certainly not custom quality, but it is more than just functional because it is a good quality leather. It does have a welt down the center. It is held together with rivets and a nice don't snap on and it fits onto the edge just properly. So it's a not really even loose. So I don't have any fear of that coming off at all. So let me take that off again, put that aside. So there is the Prandi logo, 600 gram head weight. Quick look at the eye. You can see there's both a wooden wedge and a tubular wedge in it, and it does seem to be well centered. It is a USA hickory handle. There was an option between hickory and ash. The grain orientation may be a little difficult to pick up because of the lacquer that's on it, and I'll talk about the lacquer in a second. It does not appear to be straight up and down, but it does appear to be pretty close, so it looks to be a little bit off at an angle. So as I mentioned, the head and the haft are covered in a lacquer, a clear lacquer, which I'll be removing. The head is well finished in that there is uh, no machining apparent anywhere on it. So they took the time to do a good job of finishing these off. It has a nice brushed satin with all the strokes going towards the edge. It is evenly matched. Looks like the grind is uh, equal on both sides. I don't see anything at all about it that would cause me any concerns. The axe has, or the edge has, no edge. Basically, it, it's what I call a shipping safety edge. So that's be something I'll have to do is to, to put a performing edge on the edge of that. The fit of the haft into the head is spot on. I'm gonna try and turn that so you can see. No gaps, no shavings, nothing missing. It looks pretty good. It does come with a leather thong on it. It's a nice touch, probably something I'll take off. I'm not much for leather thongs on my axes, or, but it, you know, at least you have the option of having it there if you want it. 
So my observation on the handle at this point is that it's, uh, I didn't know if I would, and it'll still take some time for me to decide if I like the, the handle shape. It's got more of a curvature than a lot of my hatchets do, but it's more resembling what you might get with a carving hatch, hat, or a carving axe. So that's kind of what I, I like about it at this point, but we'll see after I, after I do some work with it. One of the first things I'm going to do after I remove the lacquer is thin it through its width here because even though I have a, an XL hand uh, this I find quite thick in the hand now it's not bad on the hatchet but when I show you the axe you'll see I think that it's a little thicker than it needs to be so when I take the lacquer off I'll probably take just a millimeter or two off of both sides and we'll assess it from there okay so that's the hatchet let me put the mask back on put it aside bring the axe in now the axe. It is considered a pack axe because of its length, but uh, it is head heavy to say the least. At 1,000 grams, this is quite a head heavy axe. Having said that though, I think this will make quite an effective chopper, splitter, cutter. You know, it's certainly uh, not a tree taker downer, but you could. You know, you could take a tree down with this quite easily, I'm sure. But certainly you could do a lot of bucking it up and uh, cutting up firewoods and the like with it. So, what's unique about this? Well, first off, what's similar is that, again, it has the USA Hickory handle. Again, it has about the same grain orientation, not straight up and down, but not too far off. Again, it has a leather thong on it. Again, the head has that nicely finished satin brush, uh, showing all the attention to detail here. 1,000 grams, so it's quite a heavy head as you can see. It also came with a nice leather mask, nice in the terms of the quality of the leather. However, here is an issue that I have when it came. It was too big. I can take it right off without unsnapping it. So that was a little disappointing and uh, well, we'll deal with that in a moment. But the other thing was, the moment I went to use it, the snap broke. So while it looks to be good quality, it does not fit this ask, whether or not it was mistakenly put on the wrong axe. And, you know, I suppose any dome can break, but this one broke, I think, after the second time I opened it. So in the short term, until they send the replacement, I'm going to have to uh, use something else. It has the squared off eye at the back, and you can see that's a wide, big eye. So there's a lot of wood inside of the eye of this axe. Um, you'll notice also it has the wooden wedge and the tubular wedge as well, but I want you to notice that the tubular wedge is off to one side quite significantly. Now, uh, there is something else I'll point out in a second, and I don't know if this caused the second issue or the second thing, or if it, uh, which one affected which one first, and let me show you that now. Hopefully this will pick up on camera, but the head itself seems to have been machined so that there's more metal on one side of the eye than the other. That's maybe quite difficult to pick up. And what alerted me to this was, can you see, or I'm hoping you can see, how the head seems to be on the haft at a tilt. It seems to be tilted off to one side. And when I noticed that, then I looked down the edge through the handle and at first I thought it was way off to one side and I realized no it's not that it's way off to one side it's just that the blade is turned not a lot but this is was not something you you would expect to have on some actually I think it is showing up there on camera isn't it let me see if I can bring that in you can see how the edge uh, profile is tilted to one side uh, that's not insignificant it's not terrible, but it's not significant. Uh, I don't know that I would notice the performance difference in it myself. Well, I will be looking for that when I go to use this, but uh, that was a little disappointing to see, but um, all right, we'll address that in a little while as well. So same thing that I mentioned for the hatchet, same lacquer coating that I'm going to remove, I, same thing. It actually feels much thicker all the way through, especially down through here than all my other axes do. So I'll probably be taking a little bit off this way and maybe a little bit off this way, especially down towards the heel and toe down there. So, yeah. Okay, so that's the way the axes came. Now I'm going to get to work and we'll do some modifications to them. 
All right. As I mentioned in that segment filmed 10 months ago, by the way, that's with my older camera. So if you do notice a difference, and that's the reason why, um, I did quite a bit of work with the two axes to get them to a point where I felt that they were uh, usable for me. So the head at all, I didn't have to do much of anything. I will say, though, that where I had said in that video that the edge was dull, it in fact wasn't all that dull. What had happened is when they had coated it with lacquer, the lacquer had wrapped around the edge and had made it uh, quite dull. Once I got the lacquer off, it had a really quite a good edge, and it didn't take much to bring it up to well, almost hair popping sharp. It'll certainly uh, split paper quite well. So a very, very functional edge right out of the factory, and it didn't take much to bring it up to a really high, high degree of sharpness. Uh, it did take me some time to thin out the profile of the uh, of the haft to get it down to a quite thin. I don't know how much difference is going to show, but I took quite a bit out of this area and most of the thinning was done in the width through here. Um, I refin obviously uh, the first thing I did is remove the lacquer and then did a lot of hand sanding. Eventually this has been covered with tongue oil. So that's why the color now. I think I put a few coats of boiled linseed oil on and then tongue oil. I like tongue oil as a final finish. It's not like a lacquer. It doesn't have that grippy feeling of a finish, yet it is still very productive. I wonder now if you can see any better the grain orientation on the handle. It looks like it's running close to 45 degrees. It's not ideal, but it is still very good, just the same. So those are the modifications I made to the axe, and I did the same thing for the hatchet. And if you're looking at these and thinking that they're quite dirty, that's because they've gone quite through quite a bit of use, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I did thin it out. Now, not as much as I said I would in the video. I left it full thickness through here, but I did take a little bit off of each side. It really didn't have to do much to the hatchet at all. Um, now, my final experience with it is, is maybe I could have left it the full thickness and would not have noticed any difference, but uh, I have come, where I was, said I wasn't sure, I have come to appreciate this curve from a carving point of view. It does provide me a few grips for a couple of different strikes with the hatchet. So those are the changes I've made to the hatchet, and we'll talk more about the performance of them once we get outside and do some demonstrations. What I did want to mention, though, is the response I got from Prandy, because in that opening video I had mentioned that while I liked the quality of the mask, the fact that it did not fit the head, and the fact that the snap broke off after one or two uses, uh, I did contact the company and they did assure me that it must have been a, a human error at their part that they had obviously put the wrong mask on this axe. However, they did not send me a replacement, so I will have to fix that myself. And I think that wouldn't be too hard of a fix. Uh, I, I may get someone to do it for me. I may try to do it myself by because I'm going to have to put a new dome snap on if I want to use it as is. What I have been doing with it, though, is holding it on with a small bungee cord that has two hooks that I hold the mask on as is. So that's part of it. Now, the other and more significant issue that I want to bring up was the head alignment. Also, I think I went into quite a bit of detail talking about what appeared to be a really poor mounting of the head on the haft. And when I spoke with the company, and of course I also mentioned what appeared to me to be uneven amount of metal on either side. What they said is because these heads are hand finished and hand mounted, that there may be from the casting and from the mount or from the finishing process a little bit of extra thickness one side to the other. And there does appear to be a little thicker on this side than it is on that. That in itself, they assured me, would not have an impact on the performance of the act or the durability of the axe, and it hasn't, it hasn't really made any difference at all. And when I talked to them about thinking that it was misforged, and therefore that's the reason why it was uh, at a, an angle to the haft, uh, they said more likely it was just a mismounting of the head to the haft, that it, in some reason, for some reason when they did that, it didn't line up properly. Now, uh, I'll tell you, they did offer to send me a new half if I wanted to go through the work of, of taking the old one off and mounting the new one on just to see if it would make any improvement. Uh, anybody who's done that, 
that's a lot of work. So <laughs> I elected not to do that. You know, I, I may do it at some point in the future. I also mentioned that earlier segment of the video from 10 months ago that I didn't think I would notice a performance difference. It was more a matter of being picky on my part that, you know, you expect that when you buy a brand new axe that it's going to be pretty much, uh, you know, something that they consider a handcrafted axe, hammer forged and hand assembled, you expect to see a little bit more attention to detail in terms of the mounting. And I mentioned that I, likely at my skill level, I wasn't going to notice a difference, and I haven't. I really haven't at all. I, I don't know who would, but I'm sure there are some people that say that it won't land exactly the way it should because of that, but I haven't noticed that at all whatsoever. Okay, so that is the response from the company on the issues that I experienced. Now, I, I had mentioned no hit issues with this whatsoever with the hatchet. So, I am going to take you outside in a minute to show you a little bit more about the, the, the axe and uh, use it in performance. Just a sh very short couple of demonstrations. But before I do, I just want to talk a little bit about using these as tools. All right, before I share with you my experiences in using each of these axes, I just want to declare that I'm not an expert woodsman by any means. I am a proficient amateur. I do have experience using axes, enough to, that I know what I like and what I don't like, and I'll share that with you. So, I, yes, I did grow up using axes, and I've split, split a lot of firewood over the years as I heated my home with a wood stove for a number of years, but I haven't used an axe in a serious way in quite a while. Reason is, is I don't have much of a need to anymore. Most of the time, I'm just making small amounts of firewood that I can use a saw and maybe a large knife to baton for feeding small wood stoves. I don't have a wood stove at home anymore, and I don't have a hot tent with a, with a wood stove that I'll be using while I'm out in the woods. But I do did find that I used it a lot in a two-week camping trip, the car camping trip with my wife. I split a lot of firewood with this. You know, I specifically chose the Rhineland pattern, or German style as Prandy calls it, for this reason because of that long thin bit. I expect it and I was proven right that this will bite deep into wood making a great chopping axe even for the short length that it is a great bucking axe and a great limbing axe. So it is still a pack axe. It's a little heavy for that but it's still a pack axe and it has some great cutting ability. I expected that it would be hampered by that thin bit when it came to splitting. And it could have been, but honestly, with the weight of this head at one kilogram and the length of this haft, I was able to generate enough force that I was able to drive the bit deep enough in that once it reached the cheeks around the eye, it split the wood open. So I, I did not feel at all hampered at all by the style of axe. Um, okay, so when it came to the hatchet, I use this a lot for carving spoons and, and small projects like that, and I found it really quite good. I like the shape of the handle. It does allow me a couple of different grips. It's not as straight as some, a lot of hatchets, but it works well for carving because of the nature, well, the way you use an axe. It is a lighter head. It's 600 grams. And it, that's kind of nice uh, if you're swinging an axe a couple hundred times or more in the, in the working on a spoon, uh, you'll appreciate the lighter head. It may not, you'll have to strike more often than with a heavier head, but you get a lot of control with that small, lighter head. So this worked out just well, and it's very packable. The, at that weight and that size, it's very easy to put into my backpack and take with me. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll go outside and I'll just give you a quick demonstration of using both the axe and the hatchet in the woods. And then I'm going to come back and give you a few comparisons between this axe and a few other axes that I have. Okay, for this demonstration, I looked around for something that I could work on and I found a, a dead oak tree. Uh, about five inches in diameter, maybe four and a half inches in diameter here down to about seven inches at the base, running about uh, 15, 18 feet long. By the look of it, it hasn't been down all that long. I'm still seeing some smaller branches, but no buds on the end. So maybe a year, maybe a windfall of a down of a year. But uh, so that should make it still wet enough or still green enough to resist chomping some. Not quite ready for firewood, but if I cut it up for firewood now, it'll be ready by next fall, if I get it split down a little bit. So the tree is still in the ground on that end, and it's still somewhat suspended as well, but it landed across a rock right here, 
and it's free of the rock right about this area right here. So I just checked to make sure that I'm not going to have any surprises when it does cut through, such a spring back on me. Uh, I've cut everything out of the way that I might catch my axe up on to deflect it and go where I don't want it to go. So uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've done any real axe work. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm expecting, while I have used this axe, as I've mentioned already, that thin bit bites deep. Uh, it's, it splits well enough if you can get down to the, to the cheeks where the eye is, but that bit bites deep, so deep, that occasionally it'll get stuck in wood. But if I do it right, the chips will fly, and I won't have anything stuck. Check my swing. That looks pretty good right there. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh, well, maybe a little deader than I thought. Chips are flying. Oh yeah. Now the last little bit. No, that <laughs> it actually went all the way through. I thought maybe that I just snapped off because it was rotten, but it's not. Good performance for this axe. Well, since I don't do a lot of wood processing at this site, uh, anything more than you know, an inch or two, and most of that is just sawn and split with a knife, I don't really have a good chopping block found here yet. I gotta find a couple of big pieces of wood that I can count on for chopping blocks. So I have just a little short stump sitting next to a rock, sitting on a rock to prevent as much bounce as possible. But I think it'll provide a stable enough surface for the demonstration that I'm gonna do. Uh, so, what have I got? Picked a piece of birch out of my fire pile here. It's long dead, but I just cut the end off. Hard to tell, might be a little spalted, but it does feel very hard in the center. And I'm not gonna carve a full spoon out of this because uh, what I really need here at the site is a spatula or flipper. But for most of it, it is very similar, except of course the bowl you would carve with a spoon. So, that looks like a pretty good wide area there. I will try to baton this through. See how this works. Oh, that, uh, that hatchet, that goes in so well because of that thin bit. Yeah, that's yeah, still good. All right, I think you just became my volunteer, this one. See if I can't smooth the plane of it down a little bit. I am bouncing some on this log, so it's not the best for curving on. But sometimes you need a tool and you don't have the best situation to work with and you make do. So what I'm looking for with this hatchet, of course, is not only the bite and how deep it goes in and how quick easily it releases, but can I do it with a curving uh, hit rather than a straight on hit? I wanna be able to do it with a slicing hit as well because for curving, that's a lot more effective. Now the bit is not especially large on this as I pointed out earlier, but it is curved and the handle is somewhat reminiscent of a curving ax or a curving hatchet. So it does give me a few positions that I can alter up and, and change on. Work my way back up the log a little bit. I'll show you what I'm doing. All right. So what I'm doing is um, working my way back up the log so that I can create a check mark or a lazy Y or V or whatever you want to call it, so that the spatula will go in that direction. I think I'll, yeah, let's work our way back down the other edge. I think I'm going to go up it a little further first. Maybe what I'll do is reposition the camera so you can see the chips flying. Now for this video I'm not going to curve the whole 
my spatula out. But I'll uh, work on it a little ways anyway, so you can get an idea of how the hatchet performs. A little bit more on that other edge. Now, this isn't a carving axe. It's not a Grants Fors Brooks, Brooks or Robins or Robin Woods carving axe. But it's an inexpensive yet high quality axe intended for general purpose with that thin bit that you're going to use for all the little chores you'd use a small hatchet for. And then turn it into a curving axe because it's the one you have with you. Hand fatigue is uh, something else you're looking for. Does it give you enough purchase without feeling like you're gripping so hard that you have to work at it, which tightens the muscles up, which limits your swing and your ability to deliver with any punch, but it also just stresses the muscles out in the hand and the wrist and the forearm so that they tire out. Now mind you of that, of course, is I haven't done this in quite a while. <laughs> Oh, don't you hate that? A hidden knot. Good thing it's in the handle. Sometimes you just don't see them on the outside. See? doesn't come through there. Oh well. Work with it. See what I come up with. This wasn't meant... this was just meant to be a... an expedient spatula anyway. So what do I think about the grip on this? I think I could have left it a little thicker for curving. It's fine for the most hatchet tasks, but uh, with an extra large hand, just a little bit more right in there, I think I could have left a bit more on. But it's not something I'm going to use all the time. See the Y taking shape? Now you can imagine if I match that up on the inside or the top side, then I'll have the startings of a spatula. So that's what I'll work at for a little while. Maybe I'll bring it back and show you where I've, where I've gotten with the hack, with the hatchet on this. The more I've used, not play with the hatchet, the more I use the hatchet, the more I get used to it, and the more I'm finding out its little idiosyncrasies, how to use it. Quite a bit of choking up. So that last curve, about two inches down from the uh, paw, is probably the best for a lot of close-in work. 600 gram hatchet's not heavy, but when you swing it a thousand times, the weight starts to add up. So what are my closing thoughts on the full-size pack axe and hatchet from Prandi of Italy? Um, well, to be honest, the, the hatchet met my expectations in every way. It is exactly what I was looking for to fill the niche that I wanted it to, mostly for carving spoons. Um, I'll tell you, the pack axe I, it was a bit of a learning curve for me. Now, we'll talk about the quality control issues in a minute, but when I, just the size of this axe being heavier than my, the other axes that I have and a tiny bit longer presented a bit of a challenge in terms of packability. Uh, it's not something I'm going to carry very often. It easily will go into any kind of transportation, be it whether it's in the back of my car or it could be in a canoe or a kayak or with a pulk during the winter. Yeah, it's easily carryable that way and I think it makes much more sense for that type of use than general hiking out in the woods and looking to split firewood. I think it's a little bit big and a little bit heavy for that. Uh, okay, so quality control. 
I really do think now, I, I got to be honest, I was somewhat, dis no, actually quite disappointed when I received the axe and I noted those things that I pointed out in terms of the mounting of the head on the axe. But once I got the explanation back from Prandy that it looked appeared to be human error at the assembly line and then I started using it and I was honestly quite impressed with how well it kept its edge, how sharp I could get it to start with, how well it has kept its edge and the performance in use that that bit design really does live up to what you're expe expecting from an axe like this. Uh, yeah I've come to really appreciate that Prandy is doing a really good job with their axes. I don't think this was representative of everything that comes out of the factory. I think this was just an error in coming out. Now that's kind of interesting because sometimes as a reviewer you get the feeling you may be seeing a hand-picked item that comes out of the factory, one that they were guaranteed is going to get good reviews because it's top-notch in every way. This wasn't. So I expect this came right off the assembly line and how it got missed I, I can't explain but it did get missed in terms of the the head mounting on it but as I said it has not affected the performance in any way. I feel no handicap for that at all. It's, it's probably not as big a deal as I made it out to be. This does provide you an alternative to a lot of the other European styles or American style axes that are out there. Uh, if you're looking for something with a bit more bite than say the Swedish axes, I think you'll appreciate that narrow bit because it will go into wood a long ways. So I encourage you to take a look at the axes and other products from Prandy. By the way, this is just one of many styles that they have uh, in their catalogs. So of course I'm going to be putting the links to Prandy in the show notes below. And there's at least one Canadian distributor that I'll put in the show notes. And I don't know about American distributors. I have seen some of their products on Amazon, so you may be able to find them there. But I think a little looking around and you'll be able to find where you can get some Prandy axes either close closer to where you are, or certainly you can order directly from the company in Italy. Okay, that's all I have to share about these two products from Prandy. I would encourage you, if you have any questions, to put them in the comments section below. If you have any comments about maybe your own experiences with these axes, I'd appreciate if you'd share those with me as well. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.